Let's do a volume calculation. We're going to calculate the volume of concrete that we need for this uh, deck post reinforcement. And as is, we're going to be using the shapes cylinder and a rectangular prism in our calculation. Take a look at the visuals that I have here. This was the original size of the deck post that we worked with. It's not the same deck post, I didn't cut it off, but this is about 5 and 3 eighths in that direction and 5 and 3 eighths in that direction. We are going to using, we're going to be working with the numbers that we had on site. This is a smaller one, it's a 4x4 four four post, but it fits better. This one is a bucket, I realize instantly, but it's a good substitute for the 10 inch forming tube that we actually ended up using and the 10 inch forming tube is about 10 and a half inches just like this bucket and when we have the deck post in the in the concrete forming tube this is how it looks like the volume of concrete that is needed to fill this form is going to be calculated we're going to calculate the volume of the cylinder, but there is no concrete where the deck post is. So the volume that the deck post takes up is going to be subtracted from the volume that fills the cylinder. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So this is the concrete forming tube. It's a cylinder. We're going to calculate that. And then we're just going to subtract the amount of volume that the deck post leg takes up up to about yay height on site it was a three foot pour height so we're gonna use those numbers let's come down here there we go let's do some numbers let me just settle down here there we go so first off you gotta realize that both the cylinder, just, just take a look at it, that's from the side here, there, that, that both the cylinder and the deck post are mathematical shapes and they can be calculated easily and uh, they, they both belong to the family of shapes that's called prisms. Okay, I'm not talking about jail time, I said prism. And on a prism, you have a base, and then another base, and the two bases are parallel with, with each other, and you have a height of the shape. Okay, so that's a prism. It's got a base, a base, and then it's got some kind of side, and the shape of the side is a rectangle. There, and the shape of the base in this case it's a circle for the uh, for the cylinder. And the other prism, let me just spell it out here. And the other prism is the deck post. It's got a base, it's got another base, and it's got sides, and there's one there. It's got four rectangular sides, it's got one rectangular side between the bases, between the bases. Okay, so. This one is a rectangular prism, the red deck post, okay, the deck post, or any such shape that's made up of rectangles that are on the end. In this deck post case, this one is 5 and 3 eighths by 5 and 3 eighths, so this is a square, but uh, it's a rectangular, rectangle, right now, okay, now I'm missing a letter, rectangular rectangular prism and this one is a, a circle a circle and the side panel is a rectangle and uh, and uh, these prisms are named from the shape of the base so this would be a square prism in case of a deck post but we just go for rectangular prism and this would be a circle on the base so that would be a circular prism but we just go with cylinder okay Rectangular prism and cylinder. Alrighty. So that's terminology. The volume of any prism, any prism, can be determined. So I'm just gonna go 
volume of any prism can be calculated by calculating the area of its base multiplying by its height that's very important in case of the rectangular prism we're going to have to calculate the area of the base that's a square I recognize that but if it wasn't it would be the same thing it, it still has a base we'll calculate that it's 5 and 3 eighths by 5 and 3 eighths now 3 eighths needs to be converted to let me just set it to decimal because that helps 3 eighths is that decimal so it was 5 and 3 eighths was let me just write it down 5 and 3 eighths is a fraction it was 5.375 inches so the area of the base would be 5.375 multiplied by 5.375 which is 5.375 squared but but usually you would want to go length times width for the area of the base and in this case it's 28.89 there you can see that number a little better in this situation so the area of the base is I'm just gonna write area for its base is 28.89 and we have to multiply that by the height and that was 36 inches that's 3 feet so I'm just going to go times 36. So the area of the whole rectangular prism, RP, area of the rectangular prism, is 1040 inches cubed. That little number 3 is cubic inches. 1040 cubic inches. Okay, everything is in inches. And the area of the base, that's square inches, and the Oh, sorry, that's not area, that's volume of the rectangular prism is uh, 1040 cubic inches. So that was square inches, inches squared, and this one here is cubic inches. The cylinder gets the same treatment, the area of the base times its height. Now the area in the base is r square pi. Now the diameter of this was 10.5 inches. Now that, that was the diameter, but that's not radius. Radius is half that. So that's going to be 5.25. Radius is 5.25. So therefore the area for the base, that's a, cylinder, that's a circle, that's not zero, is going to go 5.25 times 5.25. That is your r square times pi. That's the second function. 80 6.59 inches squared plus change and I'm gonna leave those digits on the calculator so the area was r square pi there that's what I did here r times r times pi and we have to multiply the area of the base by the height of the shape which was also 3 feet 36 inches so that's why I saved everything on the display. So I'm just going to go 36 equals 3,117.24 cubic. Oops. I, I'm going to go I N and a little 3 in the upper right hand corner. So 3,117.24 cubic inches about that 0.24 cubic inches which is about a teaspoonful of concrete yeah don't worry about that much but so that's the area of the that's the volume it now it because we times it by the height now it is the volume of the cylinder is this 3000 number so from this we have to subtract that number to get the amount of concrete that fills the form I'm running out of space here, but but uh, V cylinder minus V rectangular prism equals V concrete. How about that? So I'm going to go 3170, which is saved on the calculator display. I'm just going to minus the 1040 equals the volume of the concrete is 
2077 cubic inches now they don't sell or give you concrete in cubic inches they're gonna give it to you in cubic footage or cubic meters but this is a calculation and it's based on inches but the same kind of math and the same idea applies to metric calculations as well so from this one I'm just gonna make cubic foot cubic feet and uh, I ignored the decimal point 24 whatever else because it's such a small amount like a teaspoonful of concrete don't worry about it what you need to do uh, in every cubic foot you have a cubic foot is a cube here look up here is a cube that has 12 inches by 12 inches for the base and 12 inches for height so how many cubic inches fill a cubic foot is 12 by 12 by 12 that's 1728 cubic inches there is a cubic inch there in the wood there you've got the idea so 1728 of these little guys would fill a cubic foot this is less than a cubic foot so I just get the idea so back to the math we need to divide this number by this number to get cubic footage out of it so 2077 divided by that last number equals 1.2 cubic foot which is the same as 1.2 cubic foot so that is the final answer that's for one concrete post and uh, we had two of these so you need to double that so 2.4 cubic feet was the concrete needed for the deck pour that we started underneath that uh, car port. From here on, once you have a final result of 2.4 cubic feet, you can see how much concrete is uh, sold in every bag and uh, you can go from there see how many bags of concrete you'll need. And uh, that's, uh, that's another calculation. But this is how you work with volume of geometric shapes to get something done on the job site.